Hello world and welcome. Today's video is something a little bit different. I'm going to spend a bit of time just quickly showing you how I use tethering with DxO Photo Lab, which might not necessarily be a combination that you automatically think of, but I actually use Photo Lab for tethering all the time. So I'll go into that today. Now I normally use it for tethering. I'll be showing you just on my table with a toy. Um, so bear with me on that, but uh, normally I use it for portraits personally. Um, yeah, when I do portraits, normally I, well, I started out using strobes and more recently I'm actually just using constant lighting, video lights basically that I'm repurposing, which have been working out really well for me. I like the color rendition on them and it more easily allows me to get a shallow depth of field. With my strobes they were always a little bit, even though they were not terribly powerful ones, they were always a little bit powerful and hard to get them cut down enough in order to get a shallow depth of field. So I'm quite enjoying that whole process. Hmm. I will be down the track spending some time showing some of, of how I might use Photolab to process portraits. Recently I did a, a session and one of the people I did feel comfortable asking them he was perfectly happy for me to do it. So I'll go through some different processing techniques, particularly for portraits coming up. But starting out, let's do tethering. Um, and let me start to show you what I've got here. All right, so you can quickly and easily see here, I've got my camera. Um, you can see that it's, you know, the live view is currently going and we've got the Wii Tether Tools cable that's coming all around here and down to my computer. I've got the item there. It's just being lit through the, with the window light, so to speak. Um, so the, the actual connection, really straightforward. So let me jump onto the computer and start to set this up and show you what I'm doing. All right, so jumping across to the computer, you can see here immediately I've got the application open that I'm going to be using to actually connect the camera to the computer. The tethering app is NX. Tether, which is a Nikon product. It's a free product that anybody with a Nikon, a more modern Nikon camera can download and use. Um, and they've just added an incredible feature. It used to be a handy functional piece of software and it's just got so much more functionality in that they've added live view functionality and made a lot of other tweaks that, that are really, really helpful to the process. So I won't show you too much in this app because this isn't really about this app because you all possibly be using different camera brands. My understanding is different camera brands potentially do have free tethering apps and it's worthwhile looking into your own brand with the manufacturer and seeing what kinds of software they offer. They'll do any of them add a sort of tethering possibility. So I'm going destination to my computer and my card. That's what works best for me. I've set up a folder in my system that you know goes to my computer and then to tether example folder that I've just created. The other thing, I, of course, I can I can change settings down here and I have done. I've put this on a minus one um, because it's a black background and the camera is likely to try to compensate for that black background. And uh, the other major thing is there's a tools menu up in the menus. You won't be able to see it because of the positioning of my screen record. Um, but then I'm going to choose options here. Just drag that down a little bit. And the thing that you also need to do in this case is for destination is I've told it software to view pictures after transfer and I've set up DxO Photo Lab 7. I know I certainly have used it with Photo Lab 6 and 5 too, so it's, it's not only 7. As far as that goes, I believe it'll hand it across to just about any application. And then again, another uh, improvement is that uh, I now have naming convention same as camera, which again, from my workflow is a godsend and I'm so excited for this, but you can, you can change it to other things if you so desire and set up how your, how your naming convention will go. So that's all good. So now it's really simple. And if I go to, I haven't set it up this way. I'll put live view on. And my currently, if I click on something, it's only going to focus. You can, in that options menu that I was in, I could have gone in and told it to focus and then snap a shot. I didn't do. I tend to be at the camera when I'm snapping my shots. So I'll just go ahead and use the actual um, shutter button. 
And here it goes, straight into Photolab. And boom. It's in Photo Library right now, but you know, if I were in Customize, for example, it would, it would also work. And you see the new one comes in, tells me I need to download my lens module for this one. Cool. Now, one thing to note is that if you're on a Windows machine, and I can't quite, I'll put, I'll put a little bit of text up on the screen. I don't remember the exact command, but you have to go into the view menu and there's something there like watch folder, something to that effect. So you have to set the folder up as a watch folder on Windows. In Mac, it just kind of works automatically and, and you're, you're away to the races. Now, the thing that I do with this, once I've got that, obviously that's doing the trick. I'm gonna just zoom in. Yep, nice and, nice and crisp and lovely. And the um, thing I would do if I were doing portraits is I would pop this in here. Maybe don't put it on the shadow side so much. Put it there. And I don't need to go back once I've, you see I've got the tethering software in the background. I don't need to go back to it. I can just, as long as, you know, if I'm happy with my focus or I can just, I've got back button focus, I can just back button focus and do my thing. So what I would do with this, once I've got that reference, is I would um, potentially, you know, again, I, I do portraits with this. So I would potentially come to my color space and I would come here and, you know, Maybe I want to click there, or if I'm after a more neutral gray, I can hit one of these down here for sure. I think honestly these work as well. Um, these ones up here are slightly tinted, so these are tinted to give nice pleasing skin tones, and these are tinted for outdoor scenes, so I understand. I don't really, I've never really used these ones to be honest, um, but that just, I can set my white balance that way Turn that off. Um, and, you know, again, because I'm doing portraits, I probably would turn this on and I would probably grab, because I quite like so far, the portrait one rendering. So I would go ahead and put the portrait one rendering on. And depending what I'm doing, anything else that I you know, particularly wanted to do, Maybe I want to do something like that, like add a little bit of lift there, that kind of thing. Whatever I want to do to make that portrait look kind of nice. And then what you can do is come over here. Bear with me. I'm on my laptop and I don't have a mouse, so I'm using my touchpad. Um, so, you know, you get that all prepared. And then just come here, create a new preset using the settings. Boom. And toy example, there we go. And then once I've got that created, I can go to, just need to think for a second because I'm on Mac, I can go to, not check for updates, uh, settings, there we go. And I can go to for raw images. What do I want to do? Toy example, and then close that down. And now what we should see is that my toy example has been applied automatically to this image. And I can see that because my midtones are up. I can see that because um, I've got my custom white balance going on there. I can see that because it's already on portrait. So now every image I take will hold that same view. So you can kind of get it looking nice and then have all new images come in that way. All right, so again, using my touchpad, I've just fumbled around and cropped that in a little bit and kapow. I know, you know, it, it is what it is. It's not a portrait, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can kind of do a nice tether job 
within the software. I guess the other thing I should say is a really, really handy feature is that uh, you know, I take a bunch of, let's say I take a series of 20 images. I like to give people a rest in between and give them a chance to see what's working and not, wor not working. Um, so when I bring somebody over to the computer, I generally will put it on. You won't be able to see all of this. Again, I apologize, I'm only recording part of my screen, but I put it on um, my full screen and they can just go through and they can um, star rate anything that that catches their eye. So that is my Tether workflow. All right, so hopefully that's been helpful. That's how I go about tethering with Photolab and with Nikon NX Tether. As I said, I will continue on. I've got sort of about three or four at least, and it may expand as I go, ideas of videos that I'll do that are specifically around editing portraits in Photolab, which you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody's got tips and techniques, so as I'm sharing those, please do call out because I learn something new. Nearly every time I um, publish a video, someone will pop something into the comments or make some little um, addition that, that is really helpful. So that is the kind of community that I'm hoping for with this channel, so please do continue. And uh, yeah, hang on tight. I'll try not to leave it too long before I get another one out. I am always fitting these in around 101 other things um, but I will do my best to kind of keep this series reasonably tight and together. So with that, I'll say thanks very much for watching and talk again soon. Bye-bye.